Okay, today we're in section 12.3, Angles of Polygons. Um, yesterday, we actually learned our first polygon. We just didn't call it that. Uh, yesterday, we learned about triangles. Well, a triangle meets the criteria of a polygon. Um, so that is our first, tri uh, our first polygon, but we also need just a quick refresher on all of our polygons. Okay, so this isn't necessarily something you have to write down every single one of them. Most of you might have them memorized. Um, however, there might be some that you don't know. Okay, so let's go through and review our polygons. Um, a three-sided polygon, say it with me, triangle, triangle. four-sided, Quadrilateral. Now we know that there are different kinds of quadrilaterals, but that doesn't matter for this lesson, okay? So it's just quadrilateral. Five sided? Pentagon. Six sided? Hexagon. Come on, guys, everybody. Seven sided? Heptagon. Eight sided? Nine sided? Nonagon. And ten sided? Decagon. Now, every um, beyond that, okay, 11 and up, all right, we just basically the first number. And then gone, all right? So however many sides it is, and then you'll see the word gone, all right? Um, so we'll see more of that um, in just a minute. Okay, so those are our different polygons. Now, yesterday, do you remember on the triangles where there was an unknown angle measure? And you said, okay, well, if this one's 60 and this one's 60 and they have to equal 180, we can find the unknown angle measure. You guys remember that? All right, so there was a total. There was a sum of the angle measurements. That's really important, and we're about to write down, okay, so I take back what I just said, um, because you need to know the sum of all, especially the first, um, the first few, okay? You need to know the sum of the interior angle measures, so I'm gonna tell you. So for a triangle, it's 180 degrees. This is important to write down, okay? For a triangle, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. For a quadrilateral, <laughs> does anybody remember quadrilateral? Yes. What is it? Yeah, but how? what's the sum of all the sides, or the angles? 360. Okay, so the sum of the angles is 360. Okay, and what happens is for every additional side, I'm adding 180 degrees to the previous one. All right, so I'm just going to tell you. All right, this one's 540. 720, then we go 900, then we go 1080, and then we go 1260. And we'll stop there. Um, all right, now, this is not something that you have to have memorized because in just a minute, I'm actually going to give you a formula that will help you find these sums, okay, if you don't have it memorized. However, if you do have it memorized, every time you see a five-sided figure, five-sided, a pentagon, you will immediately know the sum is 540. You don't have to use a formula, you just know what it is. So these are angle measurements. Just like all of you had the triangle measure memorized, everybody knew 180, okay? You can actually memorize all of the polygons up to octagon or even higher. Okay, you can just memorize them. All right, so let's finish writing those down. Okay, so um, that's just kind of the basics of polygons, and they each have a sum of their angle measurements. And it, that makes sense, right? Like an octagon, the sum <coughs> of the, an octagon's angle measures is not going to be the same as a triangle, right? Because it has more angles. Okay, so that's going to be really important for today's lesson. You do not have to write down all of this. I just clipped it out of your textbook. But what I do want you to write down in your notes is what makes up a polygon. Okay, it's not just a line. These lines have to connect to form a closed figure. No curves, no lines that intersect. All right, so you don't have to draw the shapes, but you do need to know what is a polygon. It looks like a pretty good, like, true-false statement or maybe fill in the blank. Okay, so what is a polygon? Then the second thing I want you to write down from this slide is what is the formula to find the sum of the interior angle, angle measures of a polygon? 
that formula is S equals N minus 2 times 180. All right, so I just gave you all the sums, actually, of our most common ones. If you have those memorized, you have no need for the formula, okay? However, if you don't have them memorized, there's a way that you can just plug in the number of sides into the formula and find the sum of the angle measures, and that's what we're going to do in example one. Okay, so in example one... All right, we're going to find the sum of the interior angle measures of this figure. All right, and example one really is like a springboard to example two. Um, so it's really important that we understand how do we find the sum of the angle measures. All right, so little art contest to start off class. Go ahead and draw this. Draw this. And I, I'm going to walk around and observe your artistic abilities. I have confidence in you. Uh, no, just draw the whole sign. Draw the whole sign. Now, as you're drawing it, I want you to be mindful and notice how many sides are in this figure. So what kind of figure is it? And we'll talk about it in just a minute. Right, so as you were drawing the figures, how many sides does this crossing sign have? Five. Okay. So we can use the formula if we don't have it memorized. Now, a five-sided figure, a pentagon, has the same sum every single time. This is something that you can memorize just like you memorize triangle. All right, that's why I gave them to you at the beginning of class. But let's pretend for a minute that you don't know. It's time for the test, it's crunch time, and you've got to find the sum. You can use the formula. S equals N minus 2 times 180. Now N stands for the number of sides. So how many sides did we say? Five. So S equals 5 minus 2 times 180. All right, use your calculators if you need to, or just write it from memory. Okay, what is 5 minus 2? 3. What is 3 times 180? Um, 540 degrees. Now, Say we get time for test time, and I say, what's the sum of the interior angle measures of a pentagon? You don't have to show any work if you have it memorized. You just say 540, okay? Now, if you don't have it memorized, you have to use the formula, so there would be some work <clears throat> to show, and then you'd have the same answer, okay? Do you guys, do you guys see what I'm talking about yeah. here? This is something that you can memorize, but you also have a formula to fall back on if you can't remember, okay? All right, so um, that's what we're doing here. We're um, in our books. I want you to open your books because my images up here are not very clear. Open your books to section 12.3, uh, please. I don't have a page number on me. Um, it's just gonna be 12.3. Go ahead and open your books. Okay, we're in page, on page 532 at the bottom, okay? So I'm going to give you, and uh, you'll see on your review sheet um, that we'll hand out on Friday, I'm going to give you just different shapes, okay? And that's what you see here. Um, and I'm going to say, find the sum of the interior angle measures of these polygons. Well, how do you know what the sum is? How do you know if it's 540 or 720 or 900? How do you know? Well, how many sides are in the figure, okay? Once you know that, you can either recall it from memory or you can use your formula to solve, all right? Go ahead and try for one and two. Actually, just start at one. Go ahead and do number one, and we'll check it in just a sec. How many sides are on the spider web? Seven. Seven, okay? So, immediately, once you know heptagon, if you have it memorized, just write the answer. However, if you need the formula, you would say n minus 2, which in this case it's 7, the number of sides, minus 2, and multiply by 180. 7 minus 2 is 5. 5 times 180 is 900. Okay? Anybody get 900? Raise your hand if you got 900. Okay, good. Good. Now do the same thing on number 2. Once you count how many sides, either just write the total from memory or from your notes earlier in the previous slide, or use your formula, okay? So the formula is there as a backup um, in case uh, you need it, all right?
right and go ahead and write your answer. Okay, number two, <coughs> six minus two times 180. Did you get seven, uh, 720? Yeah. 720 degrees? Okay, um, so that's good. All right, now let's say we, um, and you would see this possibly on a worksheet, possibly on a quiz or a test. Let's say I said find the sum of the interior angle measures of a 17 gone, okay? All right, all this means is that it's a 17-sided polygon. Now, this is not one that we have memorized, all right? Now, can we memorize quadrilateral? Absolutely. Pentagon, yes. But, <coughs> sorry, on a 17 gone, we're going to use the formula, all right? S equals how many sides are in the 17 gone? 17 minus 2 times 180. All right? So, what's 15 <coughs> times 180? 2,700. Yep, 2,700 degrees. So, you just follow the formula. All right, is there really any point in that other than practicing the formula? No. Okay? We're just practicing the formula. All right, any questions on the formula and finding the sum of the interior angle measures? Any questions? All right, so now let's go to example two. All right, you do not have to draw these figures, but you will write the equations that I'm about to show you. Okay? So on example two, we have a figure, and it says find the value of x. Basically, I know... What's the matter? Okay, I know all the angle measures, but I don't know x. All right, so if you remember yesterday with triangles, I knew two of them, but I didn't know one. So I could add them and then make it equal to 180 and subtract. Do you guys remember how we did that? So we're going to put this into an equation, but guess what? My total is not going to be 180 anymore. My total is going to be, well, how do I know if it's 540 or 720? How many sides are in the figure? So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So once you know that it's a seven-sided figure, okay, because you have that memorized, yes, what is the sum of the angle measures of a seven-sided figure? 900. 900. Okay, so we're great. Now, what I want you to do, okay, uh, just to save us on a ridiculous amount of writing, what I want you to do now is add these six known angle measures together. Add together all of the angle measures that you know, okay? Those are what we would call like, like terms. All right, so add them all together. 140 plus 145 plus 115 120, 130, and 128. Okay, add them all together. Got it? Yes. What is it? 778. So we're going to write this in an equation. 778, all the ones I know, plus some angle that I don't know, and you told me it was going to equal how many? 900. All right, guys, here's a quick um, fact check. If this number is bigger than your sum, you did something wrong, okay? So 778 should not be bigger than the sum, which it's not. Now I can use a simple step to solve the equation. What would I do to both Subtract. sides? Subtract 778, <coughs> all right? So if all the other angle measures <coughs> equal 778, that means X has to equal what? 122 degrees, and that is my answer. All right, so a couple challenges here. The biggest one is you have to know your total, and your total will change every time depending on the figure. Is your total on the red figure 900? Is your total going to be 900 on the red one? No, it's going to change. So you have to be flexible here, guys. Your total changes depending on how many sides are in the figure. Okay? All right, so I want you to do the red one. When you think you have the answer, I want you to raise your hand. However, 
you must have an equation. So last hour I'm walking around and I see a bunch of like scratch work. They're just like adding off to the side. You must have an equation, guys. You might have the right answer, but writing it in an equation is half the battle, okay? That's important too. So write an equation for the red figure and solve for the unknown angle measure. All right, guys, so I'm going to clear the screen so I can show you the red one. Um, now, hold on a second, though. I only know two of the angle measures. The, the bottom left is 90. Wait, does this box tell me something about the angle measurement? Yeah, what is it? 90 degrees. So 90 plus 80 plus 115 is what? 285 plus X equals 360. Again, I need to make sure... 285 is less than 360, which it is. Now I subtract 285 from both sides. And my unknown angle measure, in order for it to be a true polygon, has to be 75 degrees. Okay, who got that right? 75 degrees. All right, great job, guys. Okay, so that's example two, using equations. Okay. <coughs> All right, example three. All right, so modeling real life. Uh, in this um, example, we're dealing with regular polygons. So the word regular is really important. All right, you don't have to write anything down at this point except just example three. Um, but the word regular tells me this, okay? And this you do need to write down in your notes. Regular, and I'm just going to kind of come down here in the blank space, means all angles are congruent. I thought I had written that on the slide. Um, all angles are congruent. All right? So that's really important because if it's a regular polygon, I can actually find the sum of each individual angle measure without having <coughs> to measure. That's really the, the common theme through this whole chapter, to find angle measurements without ever measuring anything, which is nice, right? Not to have to get out our protractors and whatnot, okay? All right, so all angles are congruent in a regular polygon. Not very many polygons are regular. All right, so let's look at our hexagon-shaped cloud system on Saturn. <coughs> all right, did you know that other planets have clouds and storms and yeah. things like that, right? But they're not, they're not able to be inhabited right? We can't live on those planets, so obviously that's a little uh, science tie-in. All right, so this is an actual satellite image of a cloud on Saturn, and what did they do here? They said, that looks like a hexagon, so that's why it landed in this lesson, because it looked like a hexagon. All right, that's about it, okay? So sometimes that modeling real-life tie-in is kind of a stretch, but let's go with it. You good? Okay, so if it is a hexagon, but here's the question I have to answer. Find each interior angle measure. Well, in order to do that, I have to first, step one, find the sum. Okay, I have to know the sum of the angle measures of a hexagon. Hopefully, by the time we get to the test, you'll know it. You'll just have it memorized. Hexagon is one that we can memorize. However, what can you use if you don't have it memorized? Formula. Formula. Yes. What would I plug in for N? Uh, the six. Six. six minus two times 180. And what's four times 180? 720 degrees. Now that I know the total, if each individual angle measure is going to be the same measure, I can take the total and divide it by however many angles are in the figure. What's 720 divided by how many? Six. Six. 120 degrees. Guys, this is also something that you can memorize. Now, that's a lot of memorization. You don't have to. But what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is this is going to be your answer every time. If I asked you what's the individual angle measure interior of a regular hexagon, you say 120. That's it. If you don't remember, use your formula for the sum 
and divide by the number of angles, and there's your answer. Okay? So you have a fallback. Are, are you guys kind of catching on to that? Yeah. You have these fallbacks if you don't have them memorized. And either way, you're going to come up with the correct answer. Um, if you understand that, that's everything you need to know for section 12.3. <laughs>